Hello there my very good friends, on today's wrestling news is WWE facing a major Wrestlemania main event dilemma. Has another huge Wrestlemania match been revealed? WWE are reportedly happy with several Royal Rumble performances. And WWE worked everyone in the company with this Royal Rumble return. I'm Adam Wilborn. And I'm Andy Murray. And this is the news. A lot of Wrestlemania, a lot of Royal Rumble today. I All love it. All ties in together, doesn't it? It says the busiest kind of of the of the year. <laughs> uh, let's kick things off by talking about the main event at the uh, Wrestlemania. So, Cody Rhodes won the Men's Royal Rumble. You'd think that he would then go into the spotlight and challenge Roman Reigns for the undisputed Universal Intergalactic Supercalifragilistic <laughs> uh, Hugh Pew Barney McGrew world title mm -hmm. at Wrestlemania 39. Uh, but... The thing with that question is that yes, he won the Royal Rumble. Yes, it was a nice comeback. Yes, he's very popular, very good, and very excellent. Over here is Sami Zayn, yes. who's the, the, <laughs> the hottest guy in the company. Um, I think that that steel chair pop broke the microphones for a second. It sounded like yes. watching it, it was like so thunderous. The levels like peaked and it couldn't oh really handle days. it. It was crazy. But onto the story here, Dave Meltzer was talking about this on Wrestling Observer Radio, mm. and he noted that as of last week, Wednesday or Thursday, there were no plans on booking Roman versus Sammy at WrestleMania. Now, he noted that this could change mm -hmm. depending on crowd reactions, um, but that was the case at the time of reporting. And he added that if WWE were going to change direction and maybe do Sammy somehow and add him or whatever, um, they would likely do so before tonight's episode yes. of Raw. So, um, I don't think it necessarily would be... Okay, also, we should note as well that on the Daily Update column that's on Wrestling Observer uh, slash Figure 4 Online, Dave noted that Sammy versus Roman is pretty much locked in for Elimination Chamber, mm -hmm. uh, which is in, like, three weeks. It's not long away at all. Um, so I don't necessarily think it would be a case of pulling Cody Rhodes out of the main event. No. I think that it would probably be... A, if you wanted to have your cake and eat it, you would probably do them one night after each other maybe mm. if there's a way to do that without devaluing one of the matches um or maybe make it a triple threat but again does that then devalue the royal rumble i think it's an interesting conversation and we actually have a twitter question yes after this um i think it's a good dilemma not a bad dilemma and i'm excited to see what they do yeah what's the uh what's the football phrase a selection headache for the manager uh, <laughs> we often use football cliches on here yeah like you say we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about it when we get to the twitter questions um, yeah, it's a nice problem to have to heading towards WrestleMania. We've got too many people who could main events. Um, I think of the contrast between that and previous exactly. like, eras and stuff. It's, yeah. And uh, yeah, uh, it's. I'm just glad it's not my decision to be made, Me to be too. honest, right now. Fantasy booking is fun, though. Yeah, uh, but we'll circle back to it, as you said, in the Twitter questions shortly. But continuing the chat about WrestleMania, potentially another huge match has been revealed uh, by uh, Sports Illustrated's Justin Barrasso, who writes that uh, we could well be seeing Becky Lynch versus. Bailey mm. at WrestleMania. This following on, of course, with what happened at the Rumble, where Lynch eliminated two thirds of Damage Guitarl and then Bailey chucked her out. Continuing their feud, they were obviously meant to have that steel cage match on Raw 30. That didn't happen. I think a lot of us, myself included, assumed, well, they'll probably just do that, maybe not necessarily tonight, but going forward and wrap this thing up so we can move on to what people had anticipated was going to happen, which was, of course, uh, Becky Lynch and Ronda Rousey. Um, that appears now to be off. Rousey's obviously off television, having dropped the uh, title, the SmackDown Women's Championship, to Charlotte Flair at the end of the year. Um, question marks over Ronda Rousey's involvement at WrestleMania off the mm. back of this, Andy. Yeah, because her versus Becky was rumoured for so long, but then that was reported to be off the table as of a couple of months ago. Now she's off TV after losing the belt to Charlotte Flair, of course. Um, so it's good to hear about Becky versus Bailey being in March for WrestleMania because that's a big name program yes. out with the major title scenes. So if you build it up, like if I'm laying it out, I'm probably doing that. I'm doing uh, Bianca versus Rhea for one of the belts. Yeah. And I'm doing Charlotte versus Asuka, who looked awesome in the Royal Rumble uh, for the other one and then I'd maybe book something else as well and then you could have a tag team title match and all uh, and more if you want yeah 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 um, with Ronda I have no idea I have no idea uh, at this stage um, I don't know how this is going to land but 
I would be kind of... I don't think she needs to be on the card. Like, she's not been great since she came back. And look, I'm a Ronda Rousey fan in terms of her performances. I loved her first run. Uh, I actually liked the Raquel match as well at the end of the year. Yeah. But I don't think she needs to be on there anymore. Like, her star power is nowhere near what it was. She mm -hmm. doesn't really move the needle as much anymore. The performances haven't quite been there. This comeback run hasn't been particularly good. No. Does she need to be on the card? I don't think so. It might, yeah, imagine if you'd told yourself a year ago when she'd just come back and won the Rumble and was headed to WrestleMania. Yes, that was, you know, controversial, but we all thought, right, she's back. Yeah. Um, and she's probably going to win the title yeah. and, and, you know, one of the best rookie years ever, of course. You sat here going, at best, a women's tag team title match. Her and Shayna. And it'll be Shayna yeah. carrying it. Because like you say, Ronda's return, she's not, she's had... Glimpses of stuff, but that's with the, with the likes of Charlotte Flair. I could have glimpses of stuff with Charlotte <laughs> Flair. Um, yeah, I, not even like you say the star power stuff. Does she merit a spot on the wrestling? I don't think card? so. Not currently. Um, I'd love for her to turn it around. Like, Absolutely. Yeah. When Ronda's cooking, like she's such a spectacle to watch. Uh, like she had a good match with Nia Jax for God's sake. Uh, there's not many people who can say that. So uh, happy she's um, back. Oh, yeah, me too. Uh, so yeah, like. But yeah, Becky Bailey is good. So thank yes, you. looking forward to that. Um, although, yeah, I don't need to see any more of them really wrestling on television much in the build-ups to that yeah. because there's, there's a chance WWE has a history of just here's a match, here's a match, here's a match. Now there's the match of the pay-per-view. <laughs> what? Seven in a row. Uh, right, let's talk about the Royal Rumble. WWE's reaction to it from WrestleVotes here. Yeah, they're pretty pretty happy. I'll just read the report. Um, Source says, WWE are happy with how both Rumble matches turned out. Gunther's performance in particular, oh. along with Logan Paul and the Ricochet spot, better than imagined, they said, for that spot. Uh, the Bloodline angle stole the show as expected, which is exactly why it was last. So no great surprises there, but it's nice to hear confirmation. Gunther obviously went bell to bell, longest individual run in Rumble history, got the record, five eliminations, finished second, Great guy to have all the way through it. Shows that they actually see a lot in this bloke uh, as they shoot, because he's wonderful. Um, the Logan Paul ricochet spot, I thought was simultaneously the dumbest, stupid, <laughs> stupidest, most nonsensical piece of crap I've ever seen, and the best thing I've ever yep. seen. Because it didn't make any sense, no. right? If you sit there and you like you you pull it apart, they looked at each other and went, are we just gonna d kill each other? <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Splat. Like, neither of them was great. <laughs> it was, no it was, notes. It was so dumb, it was awesome. Uh, and yeah, the bloodline angle was obviously great. Oh. It, like, I, you don't hear pops like that very often uh, at all. And yeah, so like I'm not surprised that they weren't happy with these good things. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, they, they're quite right to be to be chuffed with with what went down in the rumble, in my opinion. Like you say, uh, Gunther. I think it's safe to say at least on Saturday night, Triple H was still in charge of booking because Gunther would not have done that under Vince McMahon, in my opinion. <laughs> we were talking about this on the stream about his last premium live event appearance at Survivor Series where he got outshot by Drew McIntyre and I believe was the first team, first person eliminated. He didn't have a great run. No. no. Um, but, yeah, um, Logan Paul is <laughs> incredible. A silly sausage of a he's, man. Everyone despises him, but at the same time, they're like, I fair play. They probably should. I mean, he's just scammed yes. uh, a lot Good of point. people. Um, <laughs> I did think when he came out, oh, <laughs> you're expecting to get cheers? <laughs> Brother, that's not going to fly. Um, Him and Seth will be really good. Yes, exactly. A, 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 a potential for, for a great rating on that, considering what he did with, with Roman Reigns, obviously. And yeah, um, from, a, from a subjective point of view, I really like the fact that the Rumble, for the most part, didn't have loads of old guys and gals in there <laughs> making the young talent look bad. You know, the people who popped in there, and we'll get to it with the Twitter questions, you know, people like Roxanne Perez, and I thought Zoe Stark was great in there as well, and just showcasing the depth of talent that they've got was far better. You know, and Booker T's appearance was yeah. nice, but he didn't outstay his welcome. I, I would have liked some more surprises, okay. I'm not gonna lie. Like, Booker was fun. Like, don't get, like, that's how you use people, Paul. You come in, do a couple of moves, do your spinner Rudy, and then get yes. out. Uh, I would have liked a couple more. I think, like, the men's one, it started awesome. Yes. But then you got beyond the Brock stuff, and it was like, okay, sludge. Like, yeah, it's bit, yeah. a bit paint by numbers until you got to Edge and Dom, and then it slowed down a bit, and then it heated up towards the end. Throw a couple of fun things in there. Like, just, like, put someone in there for a minute. I'd rather have a minute of something fun than, like, ten minutes of someone being normal. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm, the women's match in particular, like... In between, like, the bigger moments, it, it, it got a bit rough at points. I, 
the Michelle McCool stuff was fun. Yeah. Like she just put, had some Uggs and she was like, okay. Uh, weirdest, weirdest Rumble entrance yeah. ever in my opinion. How can you not know you're in a Royal Rumble? Yeah. It's exactly. not, there's, there's being a surprise to everyone else, but going, oh, me. I can't think, like, it, it's the exact same as the Logan Paul ricochet thing for me, and that is completely illogical, and I still liked it. Don't, <laughs> don't, I, I don't said care. this on the stream, I said this on the stream. Michelle McCool does, is not a WWE legend in there. Sure. Because she just gets in, and you're like, oh, cool, she's just back being part of the furniture there. She, like, she could just wrestle a week in, week yeah. She's so good. <laughs> um, but, I, yeah, I really... I really enjoyed uh, NXT stars popping in there, and we'll talk a little bit about it in the Twitter questions as well. But speaking of Royal Rumble surprises, Andy Murray, uh, the show opened, of course, with the return of Pat McAfee. Huge pap. Uh, told Corey he was a kid, uh, and then he nearly <laughs> fell off his chair. It was the perfect return for Pat McAfee. Uh, but PW Insiders Mike Johnson reported uh, that WWE kind of worked everyone with this return, uh, keeping his return uh, close to the vest, in the words of of Mike Johnson. Um, the production crew didn't get told about it until they presumably were just told, press that button, which will play his entrance music. And that scramble you saw where they were like, what are you doing? Uh, get your chair, are you doing commentary? Yeah, just get him a chair, get him a headset. Production were like, whoa, okay, three people booth. Because yeah, Cole and, and Corey Graves assumed and were ready to work the entire Royal Rumble premium live event. Just the two of them, which I love because it means that's a genuine reaction from Michael Cole uh, of, hey, he's back. Oh, it was funny when Michael Cole buried top dollar for oh. no reason. <laughs> Is that going to happen at WrestleMania? He had a fun night, Michael Cole, didn't he? He had, yeah. a, fun, he had a good time uh, yeah, good for on, him. on Saturday night. Uh, I think it's really awesome that you can work so many of your staff like this for a moment that, like, it, it was literally the first set piece of the entire show, and it's quite elaborate, obviously, like a big comeback. Think of all the moving parts in this, get the music cued, get this, get that. It's really impressive when you can work the majority of people who are even privy to these things. I think, uh... <laughs> My opinions on Pat McAfee's commentary are not popular, so I will keep them to myself, okay. however. I yeah. think he's... he's... Okay. And <laughs> maybe that, you know, surprised through the production crew, hence why, I suppose about three hours later, they forgot to do the countdown for the number 30 entrance in the Women's yeah. Royal Rumble, yeah. which made it even better. That was quite funny. It's like... <laughs> I wouldn't, I wouldn't normally laugh at that kind of thing, but because it was Nia Jax... Exactly. It's <laughs> it just, just... It's so perfect. It's, it's like, what? Mwah. What? <laughs> uh, right, let's move on to your Twitter questions. At what what culture was she number 30? <laughs> at what culture do we do? We've got to get in touch with us. First question today comes from Sam, but we've had so many of these, so thank you to everyone who sent them over. Yes. Uh, no surprise regarding what on earth happens with Sami Zayn, Cody Rhodes, and the, the uh, world titles. Uh, WWE's creative team is in a bit of a dilemma as Sami Zayn is now more over than Cody Rhodes, so it begs the question, who faces Roman at WrestleMania? How are you booking it, Andy? I don't think that's a good answer to this, right? Because Sami is just outrageously over. The Bloodline storyline, obviously, is the most connected main event storyline in terms of like connection with the fans. It's the greatest thing they've done in ages yes. and ages. Yes. Um, it speaks for itself. The noise speaks for itself. Uh, the Cody Rumble thing was good, um, and it resonated well, and he had a fun closing match with Gunther. Oh. Um, I think they have some really risky times ahead with yeah. this stuff. Uh, if they do, if they just do... So I always thought the long-term blow-off to this was going to be Kevin and Sammy winning the tag team titles yes. from the Usos at WrestleMania, which I still think is probably what they're going to do. We've reached a stage where Sammy has become so just incredibly over that that almost feels like a come down. Yeah, it's not enough. But the problem is, if you put Sami Zayn in the main event title program, if you put him in the world title program, suddenly you have to find something new for the Usos. Suddenly you have to find something new for Cody Rhodes. Suddenly you have to find something new for Kevin Owens. You are disrupting a lot of stuff and these are, might be plans that have been made for a long, long time. I think there are no good solutions. I think <laughs> all of them have drawbacks. I think that the only possible way you could do this would be to boot Sammy versus Roman on night one. Mm -hmm. Whoever wins that, whatever. Night two, Sammy and Kevin versus the Usos for the belts. Night two also, Cody versus the winner of Sammy versus Roman. Okay. But the problem with that is then you have Sammy double dutying and it also undervalues Cody a little bit because he's facing someone who's wrestled the night before. There's no good solution to this, but I am really excited to see what they try and do yes. to maintain the overness of Cody Rhodes in particular through all of this. 
like you say, um, it's uh, an incredible... I'm glad it's not me booking this. But I do have a solution for you, Andy, and it is relatively straightforward. The Rock. Mm, very close. <laughs> Nijax joins the bloodline, shoots, <laughs> shoot punches Sami Zayn, and he misses WrestleMania. What's the problem? <laughs> What's the problem? No. Um, I don't see any problems with that. <laughs> you're right. You can't have a tag team title match. I'm sorry. Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn versus the Usos does not work anymore. Yeah. That may well have been the plan right up until the show went off the air. Plans change, brother. You've got to change it now. And I think the solution I'd lean towards, again, it's not perfect. And I'm sure people can pick holes in this. And I don't know what you do with Kevin Owens and the Usos, but I wouldn't waste what you've got with Jey Uso either right now. Mm. You've got to have some convoluted way, and whether it involves the Elimination Chamber or, or whatever, I'd have Cody Rhodes say, I won the Rumble, and he's going to have to be very careful with the way they word this. So maybe it's good that they've once heavily script everything. He wants the WWE Championship. Ah, he doesn't want each. the Universal Championship, and therefore you do the Chamber, and maybe you don't have Roman in it, but you have... I suppose you could have Jay in there as well, because that's interesting in terms of... But you have Sammy, you have KO in there, you have uh, Solo Sakura and Jimmy, and maybe you make that a number one contenders... Why not? There you go. A number one contenders match for the Universal Championship. Again, it's not perfect, and I also really think that Rhea Ripley versus Bianca Belair could well be a main event of WrestleMania, but again, a good problem to have heading towards uh, the show of shows. Yeah, people will like... See that the, hear these conversations go. Oh, they're burying it. No, we think it's good, man. Yeah. Like it's good that they have so many options. I'm invested to see right. what they do with it. But again, I thought it'd be sorted because you know Cody sells out the merch stand, gets a huge pep. No one really talks about the fact that Sammy's not in the Rumble. Yeah. He wins to this great ovation after that great little mini match with with Gunther in there, and I thought it was all sorted. And then. But then you get to the angle and it's even better. Yeah. It's like, oh, no. <laughs> How does Cody make it still look smart by saying, I don't want both belts. Yeah. What? Why wouldn't yeah. you want both belts if they've been unified? But That's not what you would do in the comments section yes. below. Because I think this is going to it's gonna define a lot over the coming months. I'm yeah, sure. and we'll circle back to it um, for the end finally, actually, as well. Um, but first, Matt Ryan, a.k.a. Aussie Dead, nope. says, After her Rumble appearance, how soon, soon would you believe we may see Roxanne on Raw or SmackDown? Roxanne Perez, of course, NXT yeah. Women's Champion. Yeah, I, I would hope very soon because she outclassed a lot of yes. people. And she's like 22 or something. Um, she was one of the best, from a pure wrestling standpoint, in terms of holding it together... Because uh, the matches are really difficult uh, with so many different people in them. She looked incredible. She looked great. Yeah, I would. I know she's the NXT woman. I would call her up tomorrow, man. Yeah. Why the hell not? Or like work some kind of program heading to stand and deliver at WrestleMania weekend where she loses the belt or whatever and then bring her up. I would do it really soon. I don't see any reason to hold off at all. Um, I think that she comes off extremely well. She's a really good wrestler, obviously. Uh, she would immediately be one of the better pure wrestlers in the division. Uh, she has the odd moment here and there, but you pick things up as you go along. And also, like, the times when she's had, like, minor slips or whatever on TV, she kind of works them into her character really well because she's, like, the baby face with yeah. fire and spirit and all that. The sooner you can get her away from the frankly terrible storytelling on NXT 2. <laughs> 2. whatever we're on now, the worst weekly wrestling, my least favorite, I shouldn't say worst, my least favorite weekly wrestling show of all favorite. time, <laughs> the better I am. Yeah, I, 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 I put Roxanne Perez up tomorrow, you're right. Uh, yeah, she's not going to drop the title to Toxic Attraction at Vengeance Day next, uh, this Saturday. What? Yeah, this Saturday. The what? You know, you, think, you, you think 4th of February, <laughs> you think Val Vengeance Day, obviously. Um... So I wouldn't have it drop it there. Drop it, stand and deliver to I don't, Tiffany Stratton if you want to do something like that because <laughs> they're one of the best characters uh, on television. And, uh, yeah, bring her up. And also, then you've got a ready-made pathway in, let's say, six months to bring Cora Jade up to the main roster because they can feud again and they work really best well friends. together. They were best friends yeah, for, and, for 28 days. And, uh, That's how good the storytelling is on this show. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and... Uh, yeah, like you say, she's just a natural. She's one of the most pure baby faces I've seen for quite some... Since Bailey, on. She's fantastic, yeah. So, yeah, best luck to her. And, yeah, shout out again to, to Zoe Stock and to Indy Hartwell, who were, who were great in the Women's Royal Rumble match. Final question today. I've uh, teased you about this, but you don't know about it. So it comes from <laughs> a Aaron, Okay. Uh, who writes... With the reappearance of Asuka's dark personality, do you, you think we may get a Kana versus... 
Lily match at WrestleMania. <laughs> imagine, imagine. Uh, well, Lily has uh, winked before, yeah. of course, so we know she's a real person. And that's um, removed <laughs> Dewdrop's personality and finally allowed her to become Piper Niven again. Yeah, exactly. Which is, thank Christ she, for that, she, by the way. Her soul. Uh, yeah, I was very happy to see Piper back to being Piper. She looked good in the Rumble as well. She's yeah. a really good wrestler. Jeez, um, who doesn't mine. always get the credit she deserves, I feel. Um, Lily, Lily versus... No. No. <laughs> no, brother. No. You called it. Have a fight, Charlotte Flair. Yeah, yeah I think the I think the key with nailing this new Asuka is to keep her away from the supernatural bull SHIT. Yeah. Keep her away from that rubbish. I don't want her teleporting and so like. You don't want an amount of pitchy black spells. match between her and Charlotte Flair. Absolutely. Something. Hell no. Hell no. Hell no. Hell no. I think that um, yes, like the, the aesthetic is quite wild, the m murder clown, all that stuff, but the key to nailing it is to just make her a dangerous wrestler who has a cool aesthetic and not some spooky bollocks. Um, I would have her just destroy Charlotte Flair at WrestleMania, yeah. to be honest. I love oh, this. Oh, he's not going to destroy Charlotte Flair's baby face aura. Oh, I mean. whoa, what are you going to do? I love this new deal. Like, I love the mask. Like, I love the way she came out, and she's like, like, she's. The, the kinesis of Asuka, because she's very animated, with the still mask. Um, what a contrast that was. And then, like, I like the new music. I know a lot of people were like, why did you change it? Yes, the original version was amazing, but this new version, it's just a different flavor, and I quite enjoy it. Yeah. The face paint was awesome. Oh. The vibes, the gear. I thought she looked great. Uh, I, I'd, I'd give her the give her the belt and beat everybody. Yeah. Have a, do what you should have done when she first won, won the first ever Women's Royal Rumble and have a go over Charlotte Flair at WrestleMania. Um, like you say, Charlotte Flair as a baby face doesn't really work, but you can kind of have both of them be... Well, one of them be weird and one of them be, I'm the best. Yeah. In Charlotte. Charlotte Flair's the best is just, I'm the champ. What are you going to do about it? She, uh -oh. And she's going to... Bring that back. Yeah, bring uh Otto back. It's the, it's the best gimmick she's had. And I just love people getting misted, Andy. I'm a simple man. And go. I enjoy people getting misted. And she's quite talented, Asuka. So, yeah, put a belt back on her. There you go. Maybe she should beat the great Muta. You've got to save Lily for, uh, Lily for the... Uh, Onto the giant memorial battle royal. Yeah. Uh, she confused with uh, Uncle Howdy. <laughs> what an elbow drop. <laughs> what an elbow drop by the big man. Who knew that Uncle Howdy had that in his locker, brother? Tremendous. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on with that character right now. <laughs> I thought he was going to do a shooting star press. <laughs> Imagine. We keeps his hat on somehow. <laughs> Jeff Hardy. <laughs> See the Shane or Jeff in it behind that mask now. That's hey, what I tell you what, I tell you what. For years and years and years, people have debated who the best Hardy is: Matt or Jeff, Matt or Jeff, Matt or Jeff. No, it's the country guy. <laughs> Howdy Hardy. <laughs> what was that? What was that music <laughs> performance? It's not my genre, but oh boy, bless him. <laughs> He's rich, so who cares? But yeah. <laughs> not what we needed at four thirty a.m. Yeah. though here Should've in the got, UK. Yeah, like <laughs> I was sitting you there. Bastards complaining. Oh, I've got to stay up late and watch the Aussie show or the Saudi show. Try being here in the UK, <laughs> four thirty in the morning. They go, "Time's a hardy." I was so furious because, like, I, I'm quite spoken out against like the video. Like, I don't think we need those on pay per view, the long video packages and stuff. But I get why they're there. But after the women's match, they threw to this Braun Strowman vignette, and I was like, "What relevance does this have yeah. to the main event?" And then Hardy was on, and I was like, "Oh boy." I, I get that they've got to fill time on Peacock, yes. but it's still a ball. I don't know what the guys in America saw, but I did feel like it was kind of rubbing salt into the wound. Yeah. Uh, on one of the big breaks uh, that they aired an advert for Cricket Wireless where Kofi was like, whoa, yeah. <laughs> I'm dead and I'm pancakes and uh, look at me, avoided elimination. Oh. After he I hope dirt. he's all right. He looked like he hit his head yeah, on the table, so we do hope he's okay. That's two years in Just a row. Just keep it in simple, WWE. What are you trying to do to the poor lad? Two years in a row, he's eating dirt on his, yeah. on his uh, spot. Maybe that should be the new thing, obviously without him hurting himself, yeah. uh, but maybe maybe that should be the new thing, like he tries stuff and it doesn't work. Andy, I booked it perfectly on the on our WrestleMania preview podcast, what culture wrestling, wherever you get your podcast from, not even WrestleMania, Royal Rumble of course. Having get knocked off, Xavier Woods on the outside, he lands on the trombone, and he walks along it to get back in the ring. How could that simple. feel? Simple, yeah, exactly. Perfect. Keep it simple. Uh, and finally... Sign that says Tribal Queef. Yeah, I, that, saw, I saw that. I just wanted to bring that to your evidence. attention in case you somehow missed it. Tribal Queef is funny. It's, yeah, man. If you don't like We that. waffled on a bit today. I thought I'd keep it simple. Tribal Queef. Tribal Queef. Anyway, 
Let us know your thoughts on that. <laughs> Uh, or whatever oh, <laughs> in the comment <laughs> section below fell off my seat man <laughs> like share subscribe subscribe to What oh, Cool Dressing Jesus. wherever you get your podcast from for daily wrestling podcasts thoughts Twitter questions all that good stuff on Twitter at What Culture WWE watch well, so they can follow both of us follow Andy Murray at at Andy H Murray the H stands for Hoop 6 Golden Hoop I'm so excited for tomorrow you can follow me on Twitter <laughs> at Adam Wilborn follow us all at What Culture WWE uh, but for now my thanks to Andy Murray thank you for joining us and we will see you soon